uh, the 19th of March 2011 to the 26th of May uh, to injured people. And these are, um, I'm not sure how to describe them in, in, in English, but like real injuries, because many people, of course, just get very, very small injuries and they don't even stay in hospital for, even for like a half an hour. But these are like real injuries, the real wounds. Some of these, uh, just a second, please. So 4,067 4, uh, injured in the, in the, uh, in the attacks. Uh, amongst them are 433, 400, that's 433 serious injuries. That would involve amputation or real harms to the head or this is so far, this is the, up to the 26th, to so five days ago. As for the uh, casualties uh, with the army, I have asked the army to uh, present their figures. They have declined so far. This is, you know, for them to decide. But they promised that they will give me uh, as much information as possible in the next few days. Um, so I do not have any authority of, over the army the military figures, and I did appeal to them that this is very important, and hopefully in the next few days, I'll be able to, well, we, the government, will be able to um, get the figures, but the thing, the, the situation with the army is a little bit more complicated, of course, uh, for security concerns and intelligence concerns and other things. But these are, were issued by the Ministry of Health. Uh, so 718, uh, martyrs, 4067 injured, four th of them, of them, 433 seriously injured. This is the bombardment, yeah. This is now uh, two months and what? Two months and a half. This is almost two months and a half of airstrikes by NATO. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Uh, could you please say your name and your institution? He did, the president, the, the ambassador of South Africa uh, kept phoning me, I kept phoning my people, but because you would have questions for him and so, okay. Naama, again, your name and the institution, please. Uh, no, I'm saying two things, Naama that what many people don't understand, especially people who are far away in the continent of Europe and the North American continent, they do not understand that we are here to stay and fight and we will never give in. How can I make this clearer? This is not the official position of the Libyan government only. I assure you, this is what Libyans are about spend a couple of hours, I say this with love to you guys, read Libyan history. We are a fighting nation. Some people think oil has corrupted us. But if it has, this crisis has awakened us. We will never give in. So NATO needs to understand, and the West, that we are not here just holding press conferences and negotiating. We are indeed fighting. In our resilience against the air strikes, we are fighting. In our gathering of Libyan tribes, we are fighting. In our love for the leader, we are fighting. In our desire to change peacefully from within, without foreign intervention, we are fighting. And when it comes down to it, we will all take our uh, guns and Kalashnikovs and fight. Libyans have the right to defend their land and they will do it. 
The second thing now is, we're not saying it's the end of the road to Africa. Africa, for example, we have the African summit, the ordinary African summit, in uh, three weeks' time almost. I think it's the 25th or something of June. Uh, and the African Parliament is sending us a committee soon, the high-level committee of five of the African Union, working hard to convince the rebels and NATO uh, to, to accept the peace initiative. Um, and we are following up with Africa, and we, we believe Africa has the right to be respected. What is happening now is that Africa as a continent is not being respected. The West is not respecting Africa. NATO is not respecting Africa. The rebels are not respecting Africa. They're not even mentioning Africa. Africa is the natural frame for Libya. Libya is an African country. So any solution should come from Africa. Unfortunately, the colonialist mindset of the West still exists, even if they, they will deny it, of course. But Mr. Cameron, and Mr. Sarkozy, and unfortunately even Mr. Obama, who comes from African origins, they still have the colonial mindset. Because otherwise, Africa has done everything. Why don't they allow Africa to solve the problem? Yes, please. Yes. The, the rebels came to Addis Ababa twice, so they are talking to the African Union, and they have met with the uh, with African Union officials. One of them is Mr. Ping, the commissioner, and they met uh, with other, you know, presidents and other committees in in in, uh, in the African Union. So they are indeed, and the Afri the High Committee of Five, with Mr. Zuma. Mr. Zuma had actually some circumstances; he couldn't go. But four of them, they went to Benghazi and they talked to them. So they are talking. When was that? The High Committee of Five, they came on around, around the 21st, just two days into the attacks. 21st, huh? No, 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 they, they came two days into the attacks. They came 21st of uh, March, the high level committee of five with President Zuma. They came here two days into the start of the airstrikes. They went to Benghazi uh, without Mr. Zuma because he had to go to China. Uh, they talked to them. They rejected the African roadmap. The rebels went to Addis Ababa twice. Uh, I don't know the names who went exactly, but they went there. They were there just two days ago. So th they are talking, and there is communication. Uh, but unfortunately, the rebels are so scared of any peaceful solution because they know they have no future in Libya in a democratic, transparent Libya. Uh, these are people who have committed the crimes against our brothers and sisters in the country, and they have brought uh, foreign occupation or foreign intervention into the country. They know that if we allow Gaddafi to stay, the Libyans will choose someone else other than the rebels. Yes, please. Right. Uh, Dr. Uh, can you just describe some detail about the meeting yesterday? How long did uh, Zuma Mm -hmm. uh, and what the discussion was from Mr. Gaddafi's point of view, and also just one last thing, was there any talk at all during these meetings about the Mr. Gaddafi meeting? Um, Mr. Zuma had discussed any uh, uh, exit strategies as they, were, as they have been called in the media. He knows uh, the leader, he knows how digni dignified he is, uh, how honorable he is, and how he will stay in Libya and fight for the future uh, of, of Libya as a whole. So how, how, many, how long did they meet together privately? Was it just a um, I do not have information on, on this particular detail, but I will check for you. But they met at length. They, they talked for a long time. Hundreds have been killed in the east of the country in the fights between the armed forces and the tribes and the rebels. So blood has been shed. If Gaddafi disappears for any reason, then the safety valve has disappeared, then you will have a civil war. The great tribes, of, especially of the West, the Middle, and the South, who have declared uh, their uh, allegiance uh, to Libya as a home country and to Gaddafi as a, 
as a figure of this country, they, they, they will not accept the rebels. They will fight against them city to city, street to street, and we will have bloodshed. Gaddafi's presence will ensure that we move forward in a political process peacefully and without bloodshed, provided the armed rebels give up their arms. And as we said, the guarantee for us as Gaddafi, but for the international community, for the African Union, we accept the presence of the African Union, we accept observers, we accept fact-finding missions, we accept any technique or strategy that will make the rebels feel secure so we could have a transitional period to move forward. But don't tell us that Gaddafi's departure will solve the problem. This is a false assumption, a very dangerous one, actually, for like two months. Because, of course, the rebels have been saying to NATO, we need, because Bani Walid, which is the tribe of Furfalla, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest tribe in Libya, the rebels have been saying to NATO, don't come close or touch this tribe because we want them to be with us. We do not want to anger them. We know this because every location, it's, it has one goal. It needs, it wants to get rid of Gaddafi so it could dominate Libya as a country and make Libya just another puppet government that follows what the West wants. And for that, they are prepared to attack civilians, civilian centers of population. And do you know what happened? The city of Bani Walid, which you are welcome to visit anytime, by the way. You could go tomorrow if you want. The city of Bani Walid came out in its thousands. Libyan TV was showing it. Thousands of thousands came out on the streets celebrating that they had been attacked because they were really angry that they were the only city that wasn't attacked. They felt that they were not honored, you know. They came out celebrating and shouting, you know, finally, we are Libyans, we are, we feel patriotic, we feel, you know, NATO is scared of us, attacked us. So NATO cannot be uglier and cannot be more immoral. They need to allow Libyans to have a peaceful political process. Richard. So I'm, I'm telling you, sorry, yes. I actually, I see, sincerely do not have information. I, I know I've heard of the event. Uh, I did not have enough time to get around to uh, ask about it and get enough information. Uh, I'm going to remind my colleagues now to um, ask me later to, 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 you know, to find out for you. I will find out for you guys and I will let you know, okay? Last question. Richard? Name and institution. Sorry, Richard Benson, the Telegraph. Yes. Um, just, I know you're saying there are a couple of very technical details. Um, on the casualty list, you said like, uh, 718 civilian casualties. Do you have a breakdown of men, women, and children? Yes, the, uh, it's unfortunate. The, the, okay, the, uh, the head of the uh, 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 press department of the health, of the Ministry of Health, who some of you have seen before here, Dr. Mohammed Jibril Burki. Uh, some of you would remember him. Uh, he speaks good English, uh, and he, he was here twice before. He was coming to give you detailed information of not just the sex, man, woman, and the age, but also the hospitals and the cities and everything. So very detailed, nicely laid out. But unfortunately, he had to leave uh, on a business trip for a few days, and he will be back in two or three, day, uh, three days' time, I believe. Uh, we could, of course, ask someone else to come, but uh, we believe he is uh, the, the, the one most informed, and he has the graphics, and he speaks good English. So I'm going to ask you to wait for two or three days, and he will give you uh, the whole thing nicely.